Today on the Wow Factor podcast, we have a very special guest. She is a nominee. She's the top three nominee from the prestigious Ernest and Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award in 2018. She has awarded the best, 10 best inspiring CEOs back in 2020 by Industry Era. She's a member of the international who's who of professionals, a life member of the international business leaders, and the C and also a life member of Asia, the Asia CEO community. Without further hesitation, I would like to introduce you to Dato Monira, the founder and CEO of Branded International. Welcome Hi, to the Samuel. World Factor podcast. Thank you, Samuel. Thanks for having me. The pleasure is all mine. How has been your week so far? Right. Um, okay, it has been uh, pretty hectic, you know, being the, you know, the first quarter of the year. Uh, much planning has, has been uh, put, efforts has been put into the planning for 2021. So, uh, you know, so we, we kind of need to ensure that, uh, uh, you know, people are, uh, understands what needs to be done. All right. Especially now with uh, operating in a new norm. Uh, so there's, you know, um, uh, what we call communications and calibrations needs to happen, right? To ensure that people are uh, with you on, on this journey. Well, oh, that must have been a very, yeah. very hectic in terms of the plannings. Yeah, yeah, it is. I, it's important. It's, 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 it's an important part of the business, right? I mean, if you don't plan, you're planning to fail. That's, that's <laughs> very, very true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very, very, very true. <laughs> yeah. So uh, as I introduce you to the guests, people would like to know who about who, who you are. So just give us a brief introduction of who exactly Dr. Monira is. Okay, thanks again. Uh, well, I'm just still a very ordinary human being like uh, every one of you who are listening in. Uh, I'm certainly a wife, a mother, a daughter, daughter-in-law, um, and um, I love to travel. Um, certainly a, a strong advocate as a, a mentor, as an educator. Uh, I love to drink coffee uh, and I'm a strong advocate of the women agenda. Yeah. Uh, on a professional run, um, I actually have a total of about 25 years of uh, corporate experience, uh, ranging from uh, human resource to looking at uh, customer experience. Um, and that was 25 years and of which um, after the 25 years, I've decided to become my own boss. So I started Brand International about 16 years ago. And essentially the company is a, a, a very boutique uh, consulting company, uh, but our business has essentially evolved into a very much a Malaysian owned company. And today uh, we have about a, a thousand um, uh, workforce. Uh, that is supporting our operations, um, primary in a couple of markets. Obviously, Malaysia is our primary market, but uh, the next uh, key markets that we serve, it's uh, primary in Singapore, Hong Kong, as well as in China, uh, besides Australia. Wow. wow yeah. like, that's a wealth of experience. Over 20 years <laughs> in uh, entrepreneurship, how has that been? In total, is about 30 30. <laughs> Yeah, 30 over years, right? Wow. Well, entrepreneurship is just about 16 years, definitely. And um, well, it has its ups and downs, its mm -hmm. challenges. It's, it's uh, obviously, we there are certainly some triumphs as mm -hmm. we moved along. And I, I guess as we moved along, I, I'll be able to share some of those, the, uh, you know, the journey that I've gone through, right? And hopefully people can benefit from it as well. Yes, I can. I'm getting excited to get into it. But even before we go there, uh, for yeah. someone who is in school, do yeah. you think yeah. school is important or should we just go and begin businesses right away? What's your take on that? Yeah. Uh, well, personally, my personal view, um, school education essentially is still just very important. And when I mention about education, uh, it is beyond just the earning a degree uh, and it's more than bookish knowledge, right? Uh, from, from my perspective, education 
uh, needs to inculcate the moral value, right attitude and mindset of, uh, you know, giving uh, to the society. It's about ethical uh, values and, and help to facilitate the, uh, you know, the strategic and, uh, and conceptual thinking of an individual. So I believe if one goes through uh, a tertiary education, uh, some aspects of this would, be, would have been learned. Uh, you know, and, and this, I believe, are very important traits uh, for one to be successful in building a, a successful business. So obviously, with that, coupled with the fact that you've mentioned about passion uh, in, in, in starting a business, I think it's, it's a very good uh, combination of both. And, and, you know, therefore, you can, uh, you know, excel and thrive in this. So I, can, I guess uh, uh, education is give you the, um, the baseline. Yeah, for you to kind of do more things, right? So, uh, so personally, I I still believe in uh, education. Okay, that is a, a big yeah. slap in some people's faces who are thinking that education is not important. Just let's go start. I mean, businesses. you don't have to be a PhD. <laughs> well, yeah, but you know, you don't have to be a PhD or a, you know, uh, or, or have a master's, but at least some form of tertiary, tertiary education, right? Because uh, it gives you that that conceptual thinking, right? Uh, it allows you to be able to think uh, better uh, um, and then helping you to can uh, become more uh, stronger uh, and, uh, in, in, and more ready, you know, when you are in this uh, arena. Well, so uh, to frame entrepreneurship better, how would you best describe mm -hmm. uh, purpose-driven entrepreneurship? Mm, that's that's a good question. <laughs> uh, well, fr from my perspective, uh, uncovering your purpose and aligning that purpose to your core mission of your business can actually make a lot of difference in building a life that is impactful and meaningful, a purpose in your life, and you marry this into the, the business, right? So it, then it becomes uh, part and puzzle of, of, of your personal journey while still achieving a business success in this case. So, uh, so that's how I see it, uh, what we mean by purpose-driven entrepreneurship. Yeah. Uh, it's just like uh, 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 the company that I built. Uh, my personal uh, purpose in life has always been uh, creating impact on others um, and my ability to do little things that can uh, you know, impact people in a very positive way. So I, translating this purpose into my business could actually mean that, you know, how do I uh, uh, offer, um, um, you know, capabilities that can actually help organizations to create impact. And when we talk about from an organizational perspective, creating impact primary is about creating business value, right? So that the organization uh, can thrive uh, in that process as well. So, um, and and because of this, um, you kind of enjoy what you're doing because you're kind of you know putting your, your purpose with your core mission of the business and then you translate it into uh, uh, people who can benefit from, from, from those purpose itself. And it's important because this gives you um, you know, uh, it drives your values. It helps you to actually make uh, uh, critical decisions, right? Wow. So now for someone who is not, is unsure about their purpose, how do they discover the purpose? Yeah, I, I think that's, that's really uh, important, right? Um, um, purpose is really about uh, finding out for, for yourself. I mean, it's, it's yours, right? It's, it's finding what it, what is that is a sense of resolve of determination. What is it that you want to be represent? What is it that you want to represent uh, for yourself, right? You know, knowing what is it that you are passionate about. And, and I think uh, it, it goes with that, right? So it's important to kind of continuously do a self-reflection to in, in throughout your personal journey to kind of understand, uh, you know, and find out what exactly you're passionate about. Once you're passionate about something, then the next key thing is you ask yourself, it's what, it, what purpose, you know, can you derive from that passion? And, and, uh, and that's how, uh, you know, that purpose then gives you that, uh, the burning desire in yourself, right, to pursue things in, in your life. 
uh, and that's very important because you, you need to rely on your uh, internal motivation uh, you know to overcome your uh, personal challenges as you embark on your personal journey in life yeah and that's important i actually understand that one so now yeah, for, yeah. for an entrepreneur who would like to set up a, a business they yeah. uh, you know at the young stage you want to solve everything so what is your take on having a central purpose for your business especially for a young entrepreneur who's uh who wants to solve everything yeah well well i guess again it goes back again to uh when you start an organization right so if if an organization a great organization i would believe it's one that has a joint uh, direction of the future i mean an organization does not comprise of one person which is yourself that right? typically uh, uh, members, right? Uh, workforce, people in the in the organization. So just like my 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 company, uh, the uh, it is very important that the leadership team must have a joint directions of the future. Because once we have clarity in terms of where we are heading, uh, you know, then there is alignment. Okay, and when that's an alignment, then become people becomes very focused in terms of their executions, all right. And when they are faced with challenge, have to make at that point make certain decisions. They can always point back to okay, what are we trying to do here? What's the purpose? So the purpose gives us that uh, uh, reason and the anchor to actually uh, 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 take the company from point A to, to kind of point B. So in the absence of a purpose, then you find that, uh, you know, uh, an organization becomes uh, misaligned, right? So you can have one, one group of people is going to go north, another person, a group of people is going to go south. Resources are essentially not optimized and um, you, you're going to get mediocre uh, performance in this case here. So if you want to really achieve greatness in, in an organization, uh, uh, having that central purpose and making sure that this purpose is, is, is communicated, it's articulated uh, and understood by the employees, you know, and then, uh, uh, you know, this uh, uh, is driven through your values uh, as well as you know, the way that we uh, exhibit behaviors, as well as uh, making decisions, right? Uh, so that is really what will essentially drive a, a culture uh, that will build high-performing team. So in, in, in summary, yeah. you would say that purpose is more like the vision and it creates clarity for the entire organization. Exactly, exactly, right. So I guess once you have the purpose, then, you know, it's easy for you to kind of define the mission, right, of the organization. I mean, as an entrepreneur, you know, it is driven out of a purpose, uh, a purpose driven uh, entrepreneur, right. So there must be reasons why you you want to become an entrepreneur. I mean, if you want to be an entrepreneur just because you want to make lots of money, then I think it's a wrong start altogether. All right. But if you if your if your purpose it's really about in in my case is about creating impact on others. All right. So in this case here for my employees, uh, uh, creating impact is really about making sure that there is job personal development for for my people. Uh, people are being appreciated people are being recognized and all that so once you have a purpose you find that a lot of uh, decisions will will anchor around uh, that purpose you know that's how i i, I see that yeah. well I like that yeah. so yeah. let's talk more about branded you founded uh, branded international and yeah can you tell us more about it and why did you found it as what was your yeah. main idea behind founding it Okay, uh, well, I, I guess it's it's a long story, <laughs> but I will just um, very quickly share that you know uh, prior to setting up the company, which was about sixteen years ago, uh, I have about twenty five years of corporate experience. Uh, I've started uh, of the twenty five years of experience, uh, very much has been in the banking environment, and it has always been. Uh, uh, you know, my pur purpose and my mission to always, whatever I do, uh, I, I need to create impact uh, on, on, on others, impact on the organization or impact on the department that, uh, that I uh, uh, contribute. So it's really about contributing and I'm responsible for, for 
uh, putting my 110% efforts into what I do, right? So, um, and the last um, um, probably about eight years in my corporate life, uh, I was given an opportunity to actually drive uh, what we call a customer experience um, in for a large global uh, bank. Uh, and I was given a global responsibility to drive the customer value proposition uh, for the consumer business, right? And I was working in states and essentially uh, responsible to make sure that uh, uh, globally, uh, the bank was was well poised and positions to to create a customer value proposition to uh, increase their customer base and all that. Um, and and what we do here uh, entails uh, enterprise wide initiatives. And and as I embark on working on those initiatives, I I found that I really enjoy what. And therefore, I say that it came to a stage where. I decided, you know, I need to come back to to Malaysia, um, and I thought that, uh, you know, the best way to to for me when I come back to Malaysia was why don't I just start a company uh, and continue to do what I enjoy doing, and that's how Brent started, um, and we started as very much a a consulting company, uh, doing what I was doing in in the corporate world, uh, but now this beyond just the banking sector, uh, but you know, extending it to multi industries and so and so forth. Yeah. So, um, so that's, that's how I started. It was out of passion uh, for what I want, I uh, was doing in the corporate world. And I translate that into, uh, into a business. And of course, um, as I was going, through, um, 16 years has passed. Uh, but we realized that at the end of the day, um, you know, uh, it's always about tr trying to create a sustainable model for the company to survive. All right, we survived for 16 years, but it doesn't. Uh, it is just not about doing what I started 16 years ago. Uh, the business has to evolve. Okay, and that's how uh, uh, we move from a consulting practice into another business line, which is the outsourcing uh, uh, businesses. So, um, so we have evolved. Uh, with a one-man show 16 years ago, today I've built a workforce of about uh, one. Um, and it all has a lot to do with uh, uh, enjoying what you're doing, because when you enjoy what you're doing, um, you find that you have 25 hours a day, uh, 366 days in a year, right? So uh, so that's that's uh, really what drove me into uh, uh, into starting a company. Uh, it's just about translating what what I've enjoyed doing in the corporate, and and the fact that I need to reallocate. Decided to therefore, uh, you know, get out of the corporate. Twenty five years in the corporate has been a long time, so I've decided to to kind of be my own boss. Wow, wow, wow! <laughs> so, yeah. so are there challenges that you mainly faced while starting, and did you solve those challenges? And are those challenges still existing at the moment? Yes, has been plenty. 16 years it has, appears to be like, wow, is a, is a long time. Uh, well, I, I believe in, in the business, um, we survived uh, uh, three adversities. Uh, I was right smack into the great financial crisis, which was in 2008, I think. Yeah, 2008. And then oh, wow. uh, in 2014, there was the oil crisis. Um, and of course, uh, last year we had the uh, COVID uh, pandemic. So wow. we have survived mm. uh, three uh, adversities. And, and what essentially I found uh, or what helped in, in us, um, you know, managing this adversity, it's about being resilient uh, and being very agile to, to kind of adapt uh, to the new uh, uh, market conditions so that you know you are kind of you you can kind of ride the wave you know and and very quickly pivot your business so that you know you 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 can sustain a, a, your business becomes sustainable in this case you know so i think that that is one key challenge because you know uh, um, we are never short of uh, all this uh, economic conditions right that can that forces you to kind of need to uh, stay relevant so that's why you need to be resilient uh, you need to be very agile and adaptable, you know, to, to, to the conditions of, of the market, yeah. 
Now, the second key thing that I found uh, was obviously very challenging for, for me was really like in, in a lot of business, uh, it's scaling the business, right? Uh, it came to a stage where, you know, I had a company, a small, a small medium sized company when I started in 2004. And by the time I reached uh, uh, 10 years down the road, I was no longer a small uh, SME. Uh, I became a mid-tier company considering that I achieved a, a revenue size of about uh, above uh, 30 million uh, ringgit, right? So as you begin to scale uh, and, and grow your business and uh, securing uh, funding then becomes a, a, a key challenge, right? Because uh, projects you need to fund uh, projects which are essentially very large scale projects you need uh, working capital right so uh, throughout the years we've always been very prudent uh, in in our spend uh, we want to make sure that uh, we have enough of reserves to make sure that uh, you know we overcome uh, challenges like this uh, so which means we've learned to become to have better proper budgeting um, you know, and making sure we, you know, budget against expenses, you know, and, and you know, it's a very robust uh, uh, process where we go through, you know, uh, to, to ensure that our financial strength is, is, is there to help uh, the company to, to grow. Uh, and of course, in that process, cash flow management becomes very key, right? So it's not about profitability, you know, we may be profitable, but if we have, uh, we cannot manage the cash flow, uh, and the working capital requirements, then you know, uh, it's going to be in a. a that's really uh, what we had to do. It's it's really about being prudent and and understanding a little bit about financial management uh, helped us, um, and of course, always on the lookout to to kind of find what are potential financial options that's available outside uh, in the market that can help you to raise uh, capital uh, as and when it is required. So. Um, so, so we we cannot be just sitting there and expecting uh, money to drop from the sky, right? So you kind of need to work on. It's always an ongoing uh, process uh, to make sure that uh, you know you you have enough uh, um, cash uh, and funding to help you to grow the business, all right? So I mean, so that's probably a, another key challenge that I personally find uh, uh, or experience uh, as I was growing from a small medium size. To a mid-tier uh, company, all right. And uh, the third thing which I just like to also share is that uh, being a business owner, yes, uh, has always been like you know uh, everything you do it yourself, right? So you are uh, the business development person, you are the HR person, you are the finance guy. Uh, chief everything yeah, officer. chief everything officer, right? You do everything yourself, <laughs> and 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 you came to a stage where you know prudency met. Uh, uh, you need to be prudent, so you you come to a stage where you say, okay, yeah, this is something that I can do it myself. So you end up doing it at expense of business growth. Okay, so I guess you, you have to come to a stage in 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 your business where you must be. You must learn to uh, bring in talents to support you. That's one. Knowing when to do this is important. Knowing when to bring in a finance person, knowing when to bring in a, 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 a consultant, you know, to support all your projects is important, right? Um, and at the same time, when you bring these talents into the organization, uh, one thing which I found was very important, it's learning to let go. Okay, because it's like, hey, I can do this. Okay, why don't I do it? So in the end, uh, uh, you know, again, at the expense of, you know, you looking at the future of the company, right? And, and even if you bring people in, and if you're not empowering these people to do things, then, uh, you know, you, you, you're going to be, uh, uh, in, you know, you can't move as an organization. So knowing when to hire people, knowing and, and when Know, the trust and the empowerment needs to be given to, to your uh, people to ensure that they will be able to deliver uh, the work. That allows you then to start focusing on the future of the, of, of the business, right? So, so it's that always that uh, the emotion, uh, emotional attachments to the business sometimes, um, you know, kills, kills us. So how would someone know that they're ready to, to let go or they're ready to 
put those measures in place are there specific targets that you have in mind do you set that you set the, ahead uh, for yourself uh, and well some of the warning signs that was telling me is like you know uh, i was burnt out i was working uh, long hours you know uh, i was not able to give focus to to the clients uh, the quality of the output you know it's 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 not there you right um and 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 as such, you you realize, and and you when you look at your financials, you realize that hey, you know, I'm putting in so much work, but how come my revenue is still stagnant? You know, or so that's where you kind of need to be very critical uh, about your business, and and says that look, uh, it's not going to work. Uh, we need to be more focused, and 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 you know, and and need to bring in more talents, you know, to ensure that you know the the business. Uh, you know, uh, can accelerate in this case here. So uh, there will be signs, I'm very sure you will know it. Uh, so uh, I think one of the key things, it's it's knowing when yeah, uh, you can't possibly do everything uh, yourself. So you, you can either hire people, uh, you can bring in, uh, uh, you know, uh, help us seeking for help. Uh, on a temporary basis, is somebody uh, you know if you can or if you can, if your business can't afford it, then ask for temporary help. Uh, but I, I believe that's uh, important to help you to uh, to focus the company. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. So, for someone who's going to venture into entrepreneurship, uh, what would be your best advice for them? Is at this and this very traverse times that we're in at the moment. Right, right. Well, I guess uh, uh, this questions can kind of relate very uh, uh, to uh, understanding a little bit about why businesses fail at, at the same time, right? Uh, um, I, I think number one, uh, one of the key things is uh, we found is that uh, people want to go into business without really understanding the market, right? What is really important is that you need to listen to what the customers are saying. So understanding the market trends and the competition. Uh, so this is very important because it's no point developing a product or a service that the market does not want, okay? So that's why uh, uh, knowing the market is very important. You can be passionate about something, but if, if that passion, uh, what you're doing, there is no demand uh, you know, in the market, then uh, it's not gonna work, you know, it's not gonna be sustainable. The market that's I think is is uh, very important if you want to start the business, um, and and I've also realized that um, a lot of startups uh, have great ideas, uh, but they do not they are not able to commercialize it. Okay, uh, they lacking in the business acumen, uh, and not able to come up with a, a good pricing model right to ensure that uh, they are. Uh, profitable from day one need to commercialize your product and uh, is, is also product and services uh, essentially is is just as important yeah and of course uh, all this requires uh, proper planning don't don't just run jump into it uh it, 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 you, you need to think through it uh, spend time in in your planning um and in 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 today's environment um digital is the way to go all right, is is a must. So so you need to think about uh, trying to an online uh, uh, premise, right? Uh, but I think beyond the uh, the business technical know how, uh, I just like to share that um, in doing business beyond knowing the markets and and you know commercializing it, making sure you plan, having the right execution skills and all that. Um, uh, what really is important is, I can't uh, stress that it's important to go back to your passion, all right? You need to understand what is it that you're passionate about doing first, because that passion gives you that intense desire uh, to do something, all right? And if you can translate this passion into a purpose, that helps, okay? Because then the purpose gives you the, the, the reason why, uh, you know, reasons why, where you should put your, your efforts and your energy into to achieving something in this case here, all right? And, and we also need to realize that in, in running any business, uh, I find that what is really important is, I've mentioned actually a couple of uh, 
introduce you uh, what I found as my personal journey, the five Ps uh, that uh, uh, that has helped me in my own personal life journey as well as in, when I was going through my entrepreneurship journey, right? One, as I mentioned, was really passion, knowing what, what is it that, that excites you. Uh, second thing is really purpose. Uh, it gives you that sense of uh, resolve and determination of what that will drive you. Now, the third thing is to recognize that, you know, if you're going into business, becomes very important. That's the third P, right? When we talk about uh, perseverance, what really it means is that uh, it's when you go into business, it's never going to be a bed of roses, all right? It's not going to be a straight road. Uh, you will be faced with a lot of uh, difficulties. There's going to be a lot of hurdles, roadblocks, all right? Uh, and, and what is really important, perseverance is really about con uh, doing something despite that you know that it's, it's going to be very difficult, okay? Uh, and that's important uh, to, to achieve your success. The fourth P, which I found was very important, is really about pers persistency, all right? Uh, uh, persistency is it's, it's really about... Uh, recognizing that you know when you do it the first time you may not achieve it you may achieve failures you can do it the 10 times thousands of times you can still continue to not get it right right but persistency is really about continuing with that call until you get it right in this case here so so that's really uh, important because um, it's, it's just like in any business you you knock on doors you're trying to get funding uh, the first investor say no, second investor will say no, so do you give up, right? But if you believe in, if you have a passion, you believe in a purpose, you persevere and, and you continue to, to talk to more in investors, uh, you will get it, uh, um, you know, uh, you will strike it when to the fifth P, which is really about patience, right? Because uh, patience, it's an it's, it's important factor because uh, you cannot expect results overnight, okay? So you need to just work on it. And I believe that there is always time for everything. So when you are ready to achieve that success, uh, it will be there on conditions that you have really put in the efforts into it. So, um, so I, I hope that five Ps, uh, you know, uh, people who wants to embark on business as well. And this is something that I also see uh, why business uh, business owners fail as well, all right? Because they, they, they either lack the perseverance, they, they lack the persistency or lacking of patience, and they kind of give up uh, along the way as well. So, so it's really important to uh, 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 have that positive mindset uh, to embark on, you have to know your market, know your competition, know what uh, what is that uh, unique value proposition that you are bringing into the market, uh, and ensuring that you have the right business plan, uh, you know, to help you to get there. Wow, the five Ps put everything in full circle. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was wondering, do you think it yeah. is important that the the entrepreneurs also go in some form of mentorship or what would be your take on them having some form of mentorship? Mentorship? Oh yeah, uh, I, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's that's really important. Uh, uh, I mean, in today's context, I think a lot of businesses that actually uh, business owners who wants to start their business, they're very, very fortunate, all right? Because there are just so many uh, uh, programs and interventions that's out there, which is you can kind of ride on and leverage on. Uh, a lot of networking uh, 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 that you can join, all right, that you can actually uh, get uh, people to, to mentor. Uh, but 16 years ago when I started, uh, I had no one. So, uh, uh, so you have to learn from failures. Um, you know, you, you have to continuously learn and acquire knowledge, read, read a lot. Um, but in today's context, information is so readily available. Getting connected, connected with people is readily uh, available. Just go into LinkedIn. Uh, you know, there's just so many people that you can kind of connect and, and ask. And I think people who are essentially been successful, uh, they do not mind giving back and sharing. Right? I think that's important. Wow, that's amazing.
Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much for that nugget. So yeah. as we're looking more in the future, what would you be right. your predictions of how the business is going to be in this new norm? Well, I, I think the impact of COVID on customer behavior uh, has been very immediate industries uh, globally, basically. Then, uh, and and when we talk about customer behavior, uh, I would think that you know uh, uh, expectations has increased and their priorities has essentially shifted, right? Because now we are seeing more and more purchases has shift from in person to online channels. Uh, and, and as such, uh, you know, uh, uh, being, uh, going digital, it's, it's, it's really important. And, and uh, so brands has to, uh, how they interact with their customers uh, to deliver on a digital uh, platforms to deliver their, their, their products and services. All right. So it has to be, we are seeing more and more uh, touchless uh, shopping, contactless payments, uh, as the as the way in terms of how people are going to conduct their business, right? So beyond the technology, uh, I think there will be a lot of focus on uh, the need to improve and enhance the digital experience, all right? So it's not no, it's just not about having a digital enabled technology to support your business, right? You need to ensure uh, that those touch points uh, uh, has a very positive. Uh, experience for your customers because people are looking at how do you humanize right uh, the digital experience so that uh, people uh, do not feel that they have been uh, uh, talking to robots right they they want to see that they are still talking to a human able to resolve their their issues and I think if companies who are uh, focusing very much on the digital experience. Uh, will be uh, very successful uh, in, in the new norm in this case, yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah. So it's more the digital, the digital space is very important in the new norm and ensuring that the, you have a, human, ex, a humanized experience on the digital is also something that has to be fully considered. Yeah, 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 exactly. So I think that uh, whatever business that you're going to be in, uh, you, you can't run away from from this, right? Uh, the beha customer's behaviors has changed. Uh, uh, your technology, using technology as an enabler, but yes. you know, focus on experiences, right? Uh, that that is the the key differentiator. That's how I see it. Wonderful, wonderful. So mm. then, when looking at uh, the current space of entrepreneurship. How, what do you think should be done to increase the number of women entrepreneurs in Asia? In Asia, I mean, I, I can speak, I guess, from the context of Malaysia. Yeah. Yes. Uh, if, if we just looked at the MS, uh, SME uh, uh, market today, uh, they are essentially the backbone of our economy. Uh, we are looking at at least 98.5% of our businesses uh, today are very SME uh, uh, defined, right? Mm -hmm. And out of this, uh, 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 we, are, we are only seeing about 20% 20, 20 or 21% of the SMEs are actually women-owned. Right? So certainly uh, there are still room for improvements. Uh, to ensure that we kind of uh, bring in more uh, women entrepreneurs in, uh, you know, in, into, the, into the business uh, arena. Uh, but I guess um, uh, what needs to be done uh, entails, one, I would think it's how do uh, individuals or organizations to invest in uh, uh, women-owned companies, right? Uh, now, yes, if you go into the fundraising platforms like the ECF, the VCs and the PEs, um, you find that uh, women entrepreneurs uh, find it very challenging to raise funds. All right? So I guess one of the key things that, uh, you know, uh, you know if it is government policies can kind of help uh, women entrepreneurs, it's really to entrepreneurs through all these fund, uh, fundraising platforms then they get some form of uh, incentives, maybe the retail investors or, or large institutional uh, investors, right? So this will motivate uh, people to then start focusing on funding women entrepreneurs uh, to help them to, to scale, all right? So a lot 
of them are still very much uh, small, small uh, SMEs, right? So if you want to bring them to the next level, uh, some form of funding uh, incentive, I mean, some, I think you did touch one, uh, when you talk about mentorship uh, for business owners, uh, I would think, uh, you know, if you can have a targeted uh, mentorship for women would, would have been very helpful because uh, uh, women has essentially uh, unique challenges, which are probably very different from uh, the, uh, the other gender, right? Uh, uh, the, the challenges for women entrepreneurs is that, you know, you, you are expected to be a dutiful uh, uh, husband, mother, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, daughter, daughter-in-law, and, you know, there's just so many uh, expectations out of a woman. Uh, and, and it's good to be able to have that mentorship uh, network that actually uh, allows people or women, similar women who are in the entrepreneurship journey to share, you know, their, their challenges and to be able to share how they kind of overcome this. Uh, there are many, many associations out there we, we are still not doing enough. We are still not reaching out uh, uh, to a lot of people. So I think that that can be uh, improved as well, right? Um, and uh, uh, again, the other focus, as I see it, it's really about education and training, uh, you know, to kind of upskill the, the women entrepreneurs so that they are equipped with uh, uh, entrepreneurship skills uh, you know, to scale their business itself, yeah, right, so I think that's, that's the, the key here, um, but it's that uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, the, we, we can have all this, but it goes back again to the women themselves, right, I think one of the greatest barrier to anyone, women entrepreneur is themselves, right, it's that fear of uh, uh, taking, uh, taking that one step, so uh, uh, it's important that uh, we as women must uh, overcome those fears, uh, overcome ob obstacles, um, be bold, you know, to take that one step. Uh, uh, I think even probably when they see more entrepreneur, women entrepreneurs in the center stage, I think it, it will help to drive more motivation for them to take the bold step. Plus, again, mm. adding on the mentorship and also the access to fire dancing, I think it will be like mm. more of a, a ripple effect. Yes, yes, definitely. So, so there's the, the whole eco ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, and then to, you, you kind of will be able to see more, more participations. Wonderful. So yeah. if we're looking back in the past, uh, what would be yeah. the best advice you'd give to your 19 year old self? <laughs> um, well, my advice would be, I think, uh, do not sway from that five P's that I've mentioned again. I, I think that that becomes the anchor of what we do, right? Um, and and uh, you may have the technical know-how, you may have the uh, a degree, like I've said, those gives you the stepping stone. But at the end of the day, uh, it is that the adopting the right attitude, uh, you know, wins it all. Okay. And when we talk about right attitude, uh, you know, it, it equates to that five P's that I've mentioned earlier, right? So it's really important that uh, we follow our passion, uh, you know, define what is your purpose and, and, and recognizing whether it's a personal journey or your entrepreneurship journey, uh, you know, you're going to face with obstacles, but, you know, you need that perseverance and that persistency to, to see it through, all right? And, and having that patience, all right, to, to know that uh, the time, when the time is right, uh, you will achieve what you want to achieve. Wow, very powerful. Indeed. I believe your 19-year-old self would be very happy. <laughs> so, yeah. so uh, as we look to the future, uh, how would you like to be remembered? Mm -hmm. Mm, interesting question. All right. Well, I guess I started with looking at, you know, my purpose in, in, in my life has always been uh, uh, creating impact, right? So I guess, uh, you know, I would like to be remembered as uh, someone who has, in a, my, a small way, has created a positive impact 
in an individual, may it be uh, their personal life, may it be in their career. Uh, I think that that would be something that I would uh, see that will add, uh, you know, meaning to what I have been uh, doing all this while. So in summary, you'd like to be someone who has had purposeful impact in people's lives. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it could be just a simple thing that I may have done, I may have said, you know, but it has, you know, helped and facilitate the person to kind of a, a, a difficult situation uh, or, you know, giving insights in terms of, you know, uh, uh, paving a path for an individual. I mean, I, I believe for that, um, I'm thankful that I have reached out and, and helped someone. Amazing. And I believe my, my audience is definitely going to be, I've, I've gotten that amazing wisdom directly from you. So you've touched mm -hmm. many lives Thanks. now at the moment. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so as we wind this up, uh, what would be your final remarks? Well, um, I, I can't... Um, uh, I'm going to reinforce the very fact is that it's very important to follow your passion. Um, uh, don't be afraid to to fail, uh, and and but at the same time, you know, be very ready to pivot, uh, so that you can enjoy uh, the journey along the way. All right, and and I think that's where I would like to bring in that concept of being a resilient, really. Uh, Right, um, you know, it is very important for you to be resilient. Uh, you know, I have went through three adversities, and I know uh, what are those challenges like. You know, uh, you know, going through the mountains and climbing the mountains and and coming down again, and you know, for all you know, then you have another mountain to climb. Right, so I think a, a resilient person is really one uh, who is able to see failures as a temporary setback. Uh, that they can actually recover quickly in a, a, a positive as well as a strong stance of opportunity right during periods of turbulence just like uh, the COVID right uh, everybody says you know oh I have to close shop oh I, I can't do anything but there are you would have heard that there are businesses that has thrived you know they have entrepreneurs that has done very well as well is was because of that positive attitude and they have that strong sense of opportunity identifying what is the opportunity in times of turbulence all right so it's really about when you're faced with uh, 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 uncertainty uh, you know you need to find ways to move forward uh, and avoid getting stuck so it's about moving forward so uh, it's about you need to maintain that sustain that energy level even though you're under pressure, uh, so that you will be better equipped to cope with the disruptions that's happening uh, and very quickly adapt. And uh, so those are some of the key words that I see would, would have been uh, very helpful for, for one in, in times like this, right? Uh, where you need to kind of uh, uh, focus on the positive rather than uh, uh, the negative of, of the situation. Well, I couldn't add any extra word to that. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, Dato Munira, for coming on the Wow Factor podcast. It has really been an honor having you on board. And I believe people are going, right. their audiences listen. Right. The nuggets of wisdom they've gotten from you are going to be very beneficial.